for the past two oh, years. Oh yeah, my god. He's been on a oh, really yeah. long oh, yeah. maternity leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hope the baby's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, I thought this was like a coup. Nah. I think it is a coup. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you know, coup. I took a little nap in 2021 mm -hmm. and, you know, got up. Some things have changed. I want each of you in the audience, uh, name one thing that's happened to your life since 2021. Uh, I beat the allegations. Yeah, good job. Good job. Free, free landing. How about you, buddy? I, I got in the drug business. <laughs> That's technically true. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And uh, you, sir? I got AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> How'd that happen? Uh, uh, truck stop, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Better right. have done that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you've taken courses on Elder Scrolls, Protestant Reformation, Persian Empire, and one was lost. But we have a very important topic today, perhaps the most important that we've had so far. And it is the world of Dark Souls, the oh. greatest game series ever made. And today I'm going to take you on a journey that's going to make your fucking dick rock. It's hey. going to up and down, back and forth. Um, What's so the word of the day? The word of the day is soul. Oh, so you got to explain uh, it to him. He hasn't done it before. Okay, so to the viewers and our lovely cameraman who's filling in today, uh, so we have a word every time we do this, and if you say it, you get shot by a nerf gun. Um, so you cannot, you cannot you shoot my yeah, He's a man of integrity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to teach you about the lore of Dark Souls. Oh, wait, also, whoever says them it the most times gets executed. Firing so yes, sir. Time. Okay, so what I'm explaining to you about the world of Dark Souls, first I'm going to offer a little disclaimer. Mm -hmm. So, Dark Souls, I know, first, I want to actually eat Atchie's man here. Well, uh, you've played all the games, you know everything yeah. about it. Mm -hmm. What do you two, do you know anything Absolutely about Dark Souls? Absolutely nothing. It's okay, like, yeah. so I know that Elden Ring is a prequel. Elden Ring's not a prequel. Or it's made by the same company. Made by the same Dark company. Dark Souls is one of all the big guys. You just said it. Damn it! Oh. This is going to be a difficult word. Oh, did that fire? I'll take a gun. I did not fire. Pretend. There we go. Take a gun. All right, all right. So, I have to, I'm the... Alright, right, right. so, okay. Dark Souls is known for being a very obtuse game series in which all the stuff actually happening during the game has very little to do with the lore itself, like what's happening behind it. So there's plenty of people who I 100% guarantee will play the games and not really understand what's happening in them, like who the people are that we're fighting. Because all of, I shit you not, all the lore is like within like item descriptions and like implications if you talk to one character and exhaust their dialogue. So it's pretty fucking like, weird in that way. So it's like a self-described, no? You gotta kind of it's figure like it out under your own. Yeah, exactly. And so there's kind of three levels of like canonicity. I'm gonna have facts here. One of them is the things that outright happen or stated in the game. Number two are like there's a lot of like stuff that fans just all accept because it's what's directly implied. And the third level is just conclusions I've drawn. Is it? If I will tell you if something I say is directly a conclusion I have drawn, but otherwise assume it is of a decent level of canon. It's like right? an iceberg chart. Yes, exactly. Except we're gonna be going through the timeline of Dark Souls. So in the beginning, there was nothing in the age of the ancients. And so what does the age of ancients look like in the ants? Guess what? There's fucking the above and the below. Uh, what is above or below? Oh, once again, feel free to ask questions throughout this. Just, so, what is above and below? below? Thank you. You're yeah. welcome. Yeah, so, so the above is a big gray wasteland full of giant gray stone arch trees. And there are gray stone dragons. And there's the below, which is all dark. And the idea is, during this time, there's a concept within Dark Souls known as disparity. And with, in the age of ancient, there is no disparity. Think about it like, n you never grow old, but maybe you were never young. There's no real light, there's no dark. It's all gray. Nothing changes. There are these dragons that inhabit the above, and they're all mortal. But it's kind of like, it's almost like you're starting in the middle. Like, their creation myth, like, however it got to be this way, we're completely, we're way past that. Like, we start mm -hmm. just completely, this is the status quo of things. And a bunch of gray dragons sitting around in some gray trees. And they all have a stone skin that makes them immortal. Down in the below, however, 
They're these old guys um, who kind of look like, well, we have the Under King right here. Oh. And he's kind of representation, uh, this is actually a pretty good representation of what a hollow looks like. And a hollow is like a little, like, kind of like gremlin looking dude who kind of looks like a, like a zombie corpse type thing. Do you have, a, you have any uh, other explanations? Is it like a... Is it like a ghoul from Fallout? Sure, yeah, that's, so actually not, that's actually not okay. far off. Yeah. So, okay. that's basically the only life down there that's any humanoid are these, these hollows. However, the first flame erupts out of nowhere and creates all disparity. And okay. so, the first flame, think of like fire in like this universe as kind of like this metaphysical idea of like, I guess in this case, it's of disparity and of progress. Because if you have fire, then that means hot and cold, like there's contrast, right? Yeah. So this is the invention of contrast. And four beings come to this flame, and they get four important souls, mind you not to say that word, mm -hmm. from this flame. And so uh, they're all imbued with special powers because of this, right? Are the four Sorry. people... So one of them is the... Gwyn, Lord of Sunlight. I have here represented nice. in a non-biased manner. Um, and so he gets the soul of light, and he becomes the Lord of Light, uh, so all light, fire, lightning, that kind of shit goes into there. Yeah. Uh, there is the Witch of Isleth, once again, a, in a non-biased manner. And she gets the soul of life. And so it's kind of, it's very vague, but she uh, makes magic, she's a witch, and she creates life. And Yes. They all just get it from the fire? Yes. The fire's just like, here you go. Yeah, yeah it's not really, you for. it's not really stated, like, is the first flame conscious? Does it have some sort of, it's of my... Could it be metaphorical to just be some being? Maybe. Well, I mean, we know the first plane, we know the first plane <laughs> yeah, is, a, like literal, that. The first plane like is that. a literal physical thing. Okay. Yes. But as to does it have a will of its own, mm, that's kind of up to interpretation. Got it. Um, where did it come from? Where it, Just nowhere. It just came spontaneously. Okay. That's what I mean by, like, this is kind of a world that we've entered, like, after the creation myth has already happened. So there's, like, like a lot that we just don't know that's just, like, been exactly. going, going on in the background, I guess. So that there's two other ones. So first, there's a furtive pygmy, who we have here uh, represented that. So pygmies will eventually be the progenitors of humans. So pygmies are, like, you know, little dudes, yeah. and they look a lot like the hollows for the most part. And he gets the dark soul of man to contrast the light soul of Gwyn. Um, and so the furtive pygmy and his descendants become humans, right? So okay. are the four guys who got the thing from the fire, are they all human? or are they No, all... no. So uh, Gwyn and uh, the witch are like considered, they're called gods. They're okay. not like actual like metaphysical higher beings. They're just very powerful, so we call them gods. Right? Still okay, sure. We're allowed to say the deity word this time. Yes, right? yes, you Okay, are. good. Okay. God. <laughs> so they're gods. Um, you have the furtive pygmy, who's the progenitor of humanity. And then we have Nito. I have here represented as Sans from Undertale. Sans Undertale. Because he is a... He is a um, Whoa. Sans! 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 Sans. Sure. Alright, so no. he, I, he's basically... No. He's a giant bone guy. He gets the soul to contrast in the soul of uh, life from the witch. He is the soul of death. Ooh, and so Nito's title is First of the Dead. Now, oh, this does not necessarily mean... This is like a my interpretation part in... Um, him and I haven't talked about this, but it's a, my interpretation that because he is of the dead, he is not necessarily dead, but it's more like of he, the element death is like what he's made out of. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he didn't necessarily just live. Made out of death. Well, you know what I mean? Like, he didn't necessarily death. live and then die. He is just like the embodiment of death. Yeah, okay, sure, sure. Sure. And there's going to be, later we're going to talk about the curse of the undead, and I just want to say there's a distinction between the curse of the undead and what Nito actually is. Okay. So we get, we have these four four friends, are they hanging friends? out. Uh, at least they're allies in the beginning, <laughs> and they're they're oh, hanging yeah. out uh, in the below. But Gwen is like, well, the world kind of sucks because we're in like this wasteland. There's like one fire, which seems kind of redundant that they call it the first flame because it would have been the only flame for a while until I got a second <laughs> one. I mean, that's true. It would still be the first one. Yeah, yeah, but wouldn't it at first it just be the flame? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But they're just like, well, this sucks. Nothing changes. Nothing's good. We need to go up and get those fucking dragons and... Mm, yes, dragon... They do not get like the dragons. Dragon. Dragon. Look, Jeez. I'm just going to say, in the current, when the Dark Souls games take place, there are very few to no ancient dragons left. Oh, wow. So oh, what oh. happens is they go... Oh, they did a genocide. Yeah. Do we have a genocide counter for Dark this Dark this one we don't, it's kind of... 
there's like so much implied genocide. There's so much genocide in too this. Too much genocide. It'd just be too God. much to even get. If you can have such a thing. Uh, exactly. Have, um, uh, you can't have good lore without a bunch of genocide. Exactly. And so basically what happens is they make war on the dragons. But it's very hard to fight them because it's like, shit, they have these uh, scales that are impenetrable. However... There's one dragon who's the fucking Benedict Arnold Turncoat. Oh no! <laughs> and his name is Seath the Scaleless. Bro. So Seath the Scaleless, in contrast to this is unexplained, so don't okay. ask. But he would, in contrast to his brethren who were born mortal and born perfect, he was born with no scales, so he mm. can't, he is vulnerable to attacks. Got it. Um, and he's not immortal, so he will die of old age somehow. Um, well, he's quite interested in seeing the others. Take yeah, so he's him. like, he's like, <laughs> so he comes down to uh, to Gwen. He's like, you want to know how to, how to beat the, how to break the scales? I have this little thing called lightning. We'll strip them of their scales. And this is actually um, something really cool about this game series is that a lot of the lore stuff directly ties into gameplay. So lightning actually does a ton of damage against dragon enemies oh, in nice. Dark Souls. Okay. So he tells. Uh, Gwyn teams up with uh, Seath, and he tells them their secrets, and they make war on the dragon, and they kill a lot of them. Um, so, civilization... How do, you, how do, you, how do yeah. they make lightning? Gwyn's the lord of light. Oh, yeah. so he can just light make yeah. infinite lightning? Yeah, yeah you can, oh, like, cool. in the, in the opening cinematic of the first... You no, know, he is Zeus. <laughs> in the opening cinematic, he's throwing lightning bolts at dragons. Great. And there's okay. another thing, so he's throwing lightning bolts, uh, she's creating life... Uh, furtive Pygmy, I don't really know what Furtive Pygmy is doing during this time. <laughs> He's um, there. But also something important is that Nito releases, yes. Isn't it like basically implied that Furtive Pygmy was erased from history? Yeah, yeah. Like, he so, might have been important at so the time, but we have no idea. What the powers that be uh, during the time of the story, for, did not, we don't really know what the Pygmy's up to, but Nito releases something known as the Miasma of Death. And so the Miasma of Death uh, is true, yes, is true <laughs> death. And what I mean by that is that like, Later, we'll have, like, like, cycles of death and rebirth, where if you die, you come back to life. When Nito releases um, deaths, because remember, before there was disparity, so yes, nothing... nothing actually died. Nothing actually died. Nito, through this, the cloud of death, introduces the concept of mortality to this world. Oh, God. And so, like, um, he takes their scales off and pierces them, and then Nito fucking... <sighs> Uh, you know, introduces the concept of death. And so it's kind of unclear when civilization actually develops from them being like little zombie dudes to here. Uh, but Gwyn also gets an order of knights that help him fight the dragon. There is Artorius of the Abyss. He is the knight of the wolf. And he has a little puppy named Sif who right. accompanies him. Hmm. Uh, Sif will be important later. Yeah, you can I'll fight. I'll put in the right. for later. You can fight Sif. Yeah. Mm. Later on, and Artorius. I, I thought not his little that puppy YouTube. anymore. Yeah, you're, you'd be correct. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's Kieran. Uh, she is the appointed girl in this uh, shonen uh, trio situation. You are um, um, the token female. Character. Well, it's it's just true. <laughs> um, there is Ornstein, the dragon slayer, who uh, I just find it interesting with all these like fantasy names. There's a guy with the last name like with like Steen, so I guess he's the Jewish knight. But <laughs> um, Ornstein is there. He he, he uses lightning, so he's kind of maybe like a mini Gwyn, and he has a uh, it's. He has a knight helmet that looks like a lion. Cool dude. Yeah. And there's also Hawkeye Gao, who is an archer. He's a giant. I think it's Joe. Go? Yeah. Hawkeye Go, and he is a giant, like just real big. Yeah. Um, I oh, guess God. that's a separate yeah. race that exists. Uh he's gonna come back later. And he shoots a giant fucking bow and he shoots dragons out of the sky. Because like mm -hmm. when you meet him in the one of the games, his like Arrows are like the size of like fucking like telephone poles or something. Oh, like that. okay. So he's, yeah, that's a big guy. Yeah, and uh, so also the um, the witch also has a bunch of daughters uh, who become the these witches of Isolith. That's a city she founds later on. Mm -hmm. uh, they burn down the arch trees and create climate change using their <laughs> fire. And also the pygmy okay. lords. So the humanity, uh, the pygmies. Uh, we also know there were armies of men present during this time as well. So Gwyn wins, and he becomes ruler of the land, and he founds his citadel. So the country he founds is known as Lortran, and Lord his citadel of the kings, his capital city, is known as Anorlando. Anorlando. And, so, and so Gwyn no, goes on Lando. to have a family, okay? No, no, so there's, well, he, yeah, he has, a, he has an uncle named Allfather Lloyd. He's uh, yes. not important, this is like one-item description. 
Um, <laughs> there's the Nameless King. So he has a firstborn son, right? You're yes. supposed to be the... Uh, later you'll meet him in Dark Souls 3, and he literally is Mini Gwyn. Like, he uses lightning, all that shit. That's However, cool. during the Dragon Wars. War, he was like, Hey, Dad, um, why are we fighting the dragons? And Gwyn's like, well, you know, we gotta go take all that shit and, like... You know, build again. But he's surface. like, Dad, some of my friends are dragons. <laughs> uh, and so what? he betrays the armies of Lordran mm -hmm. and goes and fights for the dragons. And so Why? whatever name he had in the beginning of time has been erased from history. There's a lot of, like, um, in lore historical revisionism where people are erasing people from history. Got Almost it. like in ancient Egypt oh. when they would just like yeah, take just, record out. Uh, How yeah, did he the sun came with the dragons. Unclear. Are the dragons good people or bad people? Well, so you can there's they're, they're neutral. Dragons, remember, remember they are they are literally like they are unchanging. You can go like you can talk to a few dragons throughout the game. Um, there's the one in um, Ash Lake. I don't know if that is one of the everlasting. No, no. My point is, just the dragons you talk to, they're they, all they all seem pretty neutral. They're all so just kind of like well, that can't talk. He's just like the reason Gwen is attacking all the dragons is because they they wanted the the up. The, yeah, well, they wanted just anything. Because think about it, this is a yeah, this is the dragons keeping it from them. No, they just weren't doing anything. <laughs> okay. The dragons they are just, just sitting these there. big things that like big. They're like, think about the thing. The flame is ambition and like change okay. and all of that shit. The dragons were just the embodiment of like stasis. Like, oh, okay. They're not necessarily evil, but they are real fucking boring. Uh, so <laughs> oh, they are like, let's get rid of them. Yeah, we we gotta get rid of the old to make mm. way for the new. So he has the nameless king as his firstborn. Uh, then born is his daughter Guinevere. Um, oh, I've heard that name before. Yeah, and so Guinevere. Um, would you like to describe what Guinevere looks like? Uh, she's got giant tits. Giant tits. Uh, so she's a giant <laughs> woman, <laughs> a la Steven Universe. Like and that vampire yeah. from that one video game recently. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah, with giant tits. Even bigger. Wow. He has another daughter named... <laughs> wow. He has another daughter named Filionor, okay. um, who is not really important until much really later. Really and she is... So Gwen has... He's afraid of the dark. As the Lord of Light, he's afraid of the dark. Got More it. specifically, he's afraid of the dark soul of man. Mm. And so, uh, I like the name of the king. Name of the game. Yeah, yeah. Of the he's game. afraid of the dark soul of man. That's every human that's born has a small fragment of the dark soul within them. And so, Gwyn has like some issues with humanity. <laughs> um, but he's he's afraid of them. But it's also kind of implied that he thinks he's better than them. And also maybe he doesn't want them to know that he's afraid of them. Mm -hmm. It's all very tense. But the pygmy lords and the progenitors of humanity go build their own city called the Ring City. And he basically gives his daughter Filionor to them as like a hostage, a <laughs> gift. Like, he gives it to them right. to, so there'll be some understanding that there will be peace. Right, so Gwyn will is, fuck is, uh, humanity majorly over later, but uh, for now, die. there's peace. And the final uh, kid of Gwyn is the weirdest one, and so I've kind of saved this for last, is Gwendolyn. And so Gwendolyn, uh, you, by the way, you're noticing like a, uh, yeah, two yeah. of his kids have his yeah. name in it, so I have no idea what the name was. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, so the nameless king's name probably started with Gwen. Yeah, because he's yeah. Filionor. <laughs> yeah, fuck that kid. Okay, so Gwendolyn, he, here's the weird thing. So he's he's the god of, so he's all light. He's like the sun and shit. For whatever reason, um, when Gwendolyn is born, Gwendolyn is a boy, okay? He's born as a boy. Okay. However, he is born moon aspected. I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah, uh, this nice. is an this is an item description, so I don't I don't think we should look too much. But ostensibly, he's born moon aspected as opposed to sun aspected. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Gwen decides that he's like, oh, he's also born with snake legs. Classic moon. Got it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Huh? yeah and moon so aspect. Gwen is moon like, well. Your boy is snake legs, moon uh, aspect, and moon, moon's pretty gay. Uh, you're a girl now. And so <laughs> Guinevere, or Gwendolyn is raised as a girl. Like, okay. uh, despite That's being... The way with the exactly. Got the it. sun okay. is more masculine and I know. Yeah. feminine. And then also it's, the moon reflects the light of the sun. See, the, so it's like the, all a big metaphor. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, that's actually very... You're, a, you're ahead of the ball right here. Wow, you're, ahead uh, of the ball. The metaphor. <laughs> Or ahead of the game here. Um, so, yeah, you're very much on that right track. But it's also, it's like, you know, the official stance of this lecture is that we're pro trans rights. However, it's not stated if this is Gwendolyn identifies as a girl. Or if they've been told that yeah, 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 yeah. So, 
So that'd be ironic in a I don't weird know. way. That's so like doofenshmirtz. I've made you a bunch of dresses. Now wear it, them. It, yeah. No, that's almost <laughs> exactly it. Um, so Nito goes back underground, uh, assumably to the uh, go uh, yeah, at, go to Grillby's to go yeah. get a burger. I'm, and, I'm, I'm, I'm and, introducing and, death. He's just yeah, yeah. Death. No, no. Literally, yeah. literally. Uh, <laughs> later, uh, you do fight him in the first game, and I shit you not, when you go down to fight him, he is just like asleep in a coffin, <laughs> and uh, you just fall down a hole next to where he is, and he wakes up. He's like, he doesn't say anything. He's like, ah, yeah. Think so he want to live in the up. In the in the high world? His motivations are incredibly unclear. <laughs> <laughs> Some might say it. They didn't the write his to. motivations in. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, the witch builds Isolith, that's her city, her city mm -hmm. of sorcerers. Um, Seath is such he betrays so good, he is made a duke of the kingdom of Lordran. And he's also imbued within him is a part of Gwyn's soul as a gift. The dragon? Yeah, the no, yeah. 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 turned coat. Yeah. Benedict like, Dragon. He's got, a, he's got Dragon. one little, I drew, uh, Zane drew one little tear on his, because mm -hmm. he said, well, yeah, good. he was born not only in no scales, he he is blind and he has no legs. So these are all... So he's a snake. Constantly flying? He, no. Does he have wings? No, he has like little... He doesn't have wings. Oh, he has, he has okay. like upper wings, but he has no legs, like these little like tentacle things. Oh. Uh, but she may have created no, with magic. He has legs so in the opening cinematic. Oh, okay. So, assumably, he, he modifies his legs with snake legs. Or he just got like a cat. <laughs> He's the trans. He's <laughs> very <laughs> popular. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. he goes and builds an area legs. called. Sorry, go ahead. No. It's he two goes characters and, with different legs than yes. the original. Yeah. Uh, so, he goes and builds an area known as the Duke's Archives. And he starts researching crystals. The Duke's um, so archives. Just, <laughs> those weird girls. Yeah, and so, yeah. yeah exactly. Um, so, but this may be more on like the meth crystals sort of side. Uh, because yes. these crystals, so his whole thing before was like, oh shit, I'm going to die and that's sad. However, he creates these crystals that assumably imbue him with immortality. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. I think it's, he found the crystal. I think the he found crystals. Had immortality okay, crystals. Okay, but he's experimenting with the crystals though. Yeah, he's experimenting with them. And so he he's also the starts something the reason he is one tier is rolling down a uh, C scale is so part of the implication is um, so all of his friends are dead. I mean, I don't know if he liked them very much, but they're all right, dead. Yeah. Like his um, entire species got wiped yeah. out. There's like implied there might be a few left, like somewhere hiding, um, because there are dragons you see in the game, but these are all like long descendants. Got it. Um, and so, Seath has no friends, so he's like, I'll make some friends. Because he's <laughs> no. a great, he's a great scientist. What? And so he starts kidnapping maidens and forcibly impregnating them to create hybrid dragon babies. This guy is compensating. Huh. And guy so this is why I want to hear Seath is a pervert. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. He is compensating so uh, And so he does that. That's mm. pretty cool. He, he creates, um, later on in the games, you'll meet a hybrid named Priscilla. And so she basically looks like an anime girl, except she has like a scaly dragon tail. Um, yeah. So did see the experiment, or did he have sex with a woman? Uh, if you call it experiments, then it's for science. <laughs> okay. It's a tax write-off. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Does he have hands? Yeah. How does he? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Think about it. He's like kind of like a T Rex sort of situation where he's got like he's got two a bunch little of tiny arms. He's got that's, he's got like two little hands. Tentacles. Yeah, he's got tentacles down here. <laughs> he's got two little arms, and he's got wings. He's blind. Um, what a so very strange creature. <laughs> yeah, a what a strange disability design. representation here. Yeah. Uh, later but we also find there's later there's a um, a character named Yorshka, who is another one of these hybrids. Uh, she said, Finn. however, that's very dubious to what that means. Because um, he has part of her spirit. Well, it's like well, it's like Yorshka. She mm -hmm. she could have been created with the biological material of Gwyn by Seath. She could have just been. Uh, metaphorically, like adopted Gwen's daughter. Cool material. Do you mean yeah. Seath stole Gwen's cum? <laughs> or maybe he offered up willingly. Who knows? Oh, sure. Okay, so as as the pygmy's dark soul is spread out by his descendants, humanity forms, and basically humanity. The less concentrated dark soul you have, the more you look like me, and more less like uh, the yeah. Undertang here. Okay, so the less cool mm, you see. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, at some point here, this timeline, there's not a whole lot of, like, which events happened before the others, so just note, other people could tell this story in a different order I have. This is kind of loose here. But basically, there's one really cool, awesome guy 
His name is Havel the Rock. And so here I have him with the turtleneck and chain yep. uh, as Havel the Rock Johnson. Yep. That's and so funny. Havel the Rock, awesome. he fought with Gwyn during the fucking war against the dragons. I and he hates him. dragons. <laughs> oh, okay. Good. But also ostensibly, or also um, importantly, uh, he hates Seath. Because as yes, well, he fought with isn't on the same side. Of yes, he fought on the okay, same side okay. as Gwyn. Alongside, alongside, yeah. Against. And so he hates dragons, loves humanity. Um, well, not humanity, like gods, like yeah. th that kind of stuff. But he hates Seath because I think as we established, Seath is a weird, fucked up. Person. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Um, and Havel is thinks it's disgusting because of the fact that uh, there's a comic that was written. Uh, this is how deep. I didn't just play the games. I read wiki entries. Oh, wow. I read uh, interviews with the creator of Dark Souls. He's not I, uh, I saw like this comic, but they show that like basically there was like like literally this is like Gwyn is the CIA like because like there were like reports coming out among like the human like villages that uh, Seath was kidnapping women and impregnating them with dragon babies mm. and Gwyn's knights go around like assassinating people so they they stop yeah, talking. Yeah. Um, and so Howell is like, that's pretty fucked up. Right. And so the only, how do you kill a god, right? Because the gods are... They're, right, yeah, they're immortal. Well, but they well, are just, they are, they're a race of being, right? Okay. And so much like the dragons have a natural uh, weakness to lightning, uh, what, there's a weapon, there's a type of weapon in the game known as occult weapons. I think, is it synonymous with cursed later in the game? Or I think separate? so. Okay, so occult slash cursed depending on the game. And so Havel is like, well... Gwyn, when this nation was founded, there was a constitution, and it said something about not uh, being like raped by dragons. Yeah. Yeah. Gwyn has violated this uh, the constitution, and somebody's got to go get some revenge <laughs> yeah. for these crimes. So, so Havel builds an arsenal of uh, occult weapons, like oh, these yeah. cursed blades. He's going to wear. Wait, the, the, in the game, doesn't he only have one occult the weapon? Game. No, no, but this is stated in the lore that he, oh, he okay. invented occult weapons. Where did he uh, get them from? The Daedra. <laughs> yeah, the Daedra. <laughs> he made them. Also, the importantly, Havel, one of the cool things about him, his armor is completely made out of dragon bone. So, like, ah, okay. He yeah. also he has a giant dragon tooth that he uses as a club. Yeah, his club isn't even like That's it sick. isn't even like a hammer he made out of a dragon tooth. It just it's, is a dragon's tooth that he's carved cool. like a handle into. <laughs> yeah, ba ba ba. Yeah, yeah and so Havel's like he's got his yeah, he's got his uh, sword, his club. He's getting ready to go, uh, and then Gwyn is like, "Hey, buddy, uh, you want to go look at this basement right here?" And he's like, "Yeah, sure, Gwyn." <laughs> oh, no. Do do do. Gwyn locks door. And so Havel is basically locked in a basement um, for the rest of eternity. And Wait, so what? Have... No, yeah. hold on, hold on. So Wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Just, okay. Things don't... Or Things he's don't a... just, like, die of age. Well, no, no, no. Humans do. He's, a set... he's of the god race. Ah, okay. So yeah. he doesn't die naturally. Isn't it implied in the game that that could be one of Havel's knights and not actually Havel himself? Like yeah, it's, you play real fast and loose about identity. Regardless, they talk <laughs> about they talk about Havel. Havel has been imprisoned by by Gwyn forever. Johnny. Yeah, and so even Gwyn, now? Gwyn says that Havel went mad and he had to do it for his own good, but it's because he protect gonna... the dragon that's impregnating women. Yeah, he's a cool guy. Got it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, dragon is still free then. And which Gwyn is this? He's a dude. The the light god or his ch okay the big the main one. Yeah. Got um. It. And the so, but now a problem people. starts happening, right? Um. Now there's problems. Oh yeah. Now there's problems. <laughs> oh, yeah, now there's problems. <laughs> okay. Okay. The flame. Remember that thing that like creates disparity. Yeah. And also I'll note like the gods and their power are directly tied to the magic of the, the, the flame. flame. Yeah. It starts to fade. That's, that's yeah. still just the one flame? Has that just been well, like, the like, whole time? Well, assumably, I have to assume other flames came from, like, you get a little piece of the first flame, you go, you light oh, it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it also just can I mean, introduce... The, it also just, like, because you can fire. start fires oh, yeah, other true. ways. So, assumably, it just introduced the, like, physics no, concept like of fire. Not Prometheus. Yeah. Well, I think is it's it like the yeah, flame isn't yeah. yeah. just like it is the first instance of fire, but yeah. it's like there was other fire, yeah, like normal fire, but it's yeah. the only magical. Fire. Yeah, yeah. Got so it. basically, okay. what happens is they're like, oh shit, the flame's <laughs> starting to like like burn out, oh, and so at some point we don't know the order of events here, but something has happened where the bonfire system is created, um, and this is what's known as the first sin. 
And so the first sin, here I have it up in big. Uh, yeah, yeah. First what sin. C's Day wasn't the first sin? Uh, oh, yeah, that's the funny thing. Like, <laughs> not only, there's multiple sins C's committed betraying his bros and then all the rapes. So, right, yeah. So, but this is the, the first sin. God, and this, this is the first thing that is actually considered bad by their moral code. Oh, yeah, yeah, assumably. But he, he basically he ties the cycle of the fire. I don't ask me how. Uh, but somehow he uses Who? the ma manipul when. Okay. He manipulates the magic of the first flame and ties it to the souls of humanity. And so that means that as the flame will start to die out, humans will start to be negatively affected by it. And then we'll mm -hmm. have an incentive to keep, keep the fire going, going, even though our natural essence is of the dark. Right. And so this is like an artificial thing that is fucking us over. Mm. Uh, yeah. How do humans keep the fire going? So we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna get to that. We yeah. um, start the fire. Right? We'll, we'll get to that in a second. So first, when the fire comes out, the first great idea they have, um, and also Gwen creates human religion, literally like some ancient alien shit, where he in, like implants in them the idea that they need to worship the gods and worship fire, so that he can like further his master plan of this. Being but first, God King forever. Exactly. And so uh, first, they're like uh, the witch of Isolith is like. Well, I'm I'm a fucking witch. I make cool stuff. Yeah, I can just make my own flame. It's easy. Mm, it's yeah. easy. <laughs> okay. um, so that, that won't be terrible. You yeah. So you can all kind of guess how yeah. this one goes. And so she goes. She gets like her fucking grill. She puts the charcoal on. Puts the light yeah, 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 yeah. Puts yeah. a bunch of fucking occult energy in there. <laughs> uh, and when she starts it, it creates the chaos flame. And uh, would you like to read what that that says in all caps? Demons! Yes! And so that is the birth of demon kind. Yay! And so Lost Isolith is, or Isolith is destroyed, it becomes known as Lost Isolith. It becomes like a volcano hellscape, a uh, Mustafar esque uh, area. Literal hell on earth. She is, um, from the witch, there's actually no representation of what she looked like in the game, so we have drawn her as a witch. Um, but she and her daughters are fused into this disgusting creature called the Bed of Chaos, which is like a giant evil tree spirit with like flames and shit. Mm. All but one of her daughters uh, are turned into hideous monsters. Um, I'm assuming the one that isn't as important eventually. Uh, Quailana, kind of. Okay. She's kind of <laughs> incidental. Yeah, don't, don't get too ahead of okay. yourself. Yeah, um, so basically... Uh, so yeah, they're either, basically, some of them are fused with her into the bed of chaos. Is uh, one sense. is left is completely human, or god, Quailana. Yeah. So she's, um, she's in the bed? She's in the bed, bed of chaos. chaos. Uh, Quailag is turned into basically upper half woman, bottom half giant spider. Uh, so, Another leg replacement. And then, and then, wait for it, the other one, the, was her fair lady? That's that her name? Yeah, yeah. She is another uh, woman spider hybrid. Got it. And then her only son is turned into something called Ceaseless Discharge. Uh, it's a giant lava man. Ceaseless Discharge? Yeah, that's what I did to your mom like. Oh. Hey! Hey! All right. So, um, Quinn's like, that's not good. And he has his army of silver knights. They wage war against demons. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't go well. Are the demons um, evil inherently? Are they like no. turning evil? They're they just, they just kind of got created. Well, they're just, they just got created attacked. and they're just kind of naturally destructive because they're like demons. So Gwen's kind of doing like a purity type situation? I guess so, yeah. Well, isn't it the demons are like parasites that have to attach onto already living life forms? Yeah, but my, my point being is that like it's not their fault that they were made. Like, yeah. But like all of the demons were, uh, were before like regular people and then they got like corrupted. Like, yeah, yeah. My, my point be, yeah, so sorry. it's a parasitic fungal infection. Where's yeah, it's like a force this? that corrupts things. Got so it. So what's the chaos fire doing now? The chaos fire is like the source of power for the demons. So mm -hmm. later in the series, eventually even the chaos flame two will fade, uh, and demons will become less powerful. So it's like their their flame. Got it. Yes. Didn't like the witch of Isolith become the bed of chaos by fusing with the fire, and like yeah. that's where it is in the actual yeah. She game? tries to start kickstart her own fire with her own soul. Oh, and it does uh, not go well. <laughs> and so uh, she kind of sacrifices herself to try and. When and the Silver Knights try to wage war against the demons, and they, uh, it does not go well. Yeah. A lot of them <laughs> um, and demons, so, I'm guessing. no, a lot of these knights actually become black knights because their armor has been singed black uh, oh, from okay. silver. Our black knights. Yeah, I, I, th I actually think that when they become black knights, so when he leaks the flame. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I think that's that. just in that video. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, so Gwyn is like, well, shit. The last best option I have, I have this humanity thing. 
So what we need to do is we need to link the flame. Well, what does link the flame mean? <laughs> you might ask? Yeah. The flame. <laughs> it means fire's right there. You just fucking throw, hurl yourself into the God. fire. Okay. And you yeah. use the power of your soul oh, to keep the fire going. So it requires human sacrifice. Or God sacrifice. Uh, you create, <laughs> make, make yourself into kindling for the fire. That sounds fun, and not like it would cause problems at all. <laughs> yeah. Turn in the air! <laughs> yeah, that's a, just whenever you're like, oh, Gwen did something bad. Turn in the air! Got it. Okay. Yeah, just, just hand wave it away. Mm -hmm. um, and so he goes, and he's like, I guess I have to link the first flame. Um, I'm going <laughs> to use my soul and my power as Zeus yeah. to make the fire keep going. And so he's like, I'm going to head out. Um, Gwendolyn, you're in charge of Anne Orlando while Daddy is gone. Uh, well, Daddy is consumed the by the first large, one. The well-endowed one. No, no, Gwendolyn is the, the femboy. Oh, uh, snake the legs. femboy. Got and it. this is the part of the thing is later when you go to Anne Orlando, Gwendolyn's well-versed in illusion magic. Gwendolyn is the yeah. guy. Yeah. It's like a ghost city the when you get yes, there. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It's pretty much deserted. Because um, he so starts up being the king or whatever. Yeah. yeah, and so when, when he leaves, the gods start to slowly abandon Anne Orlando. Uh, named in there are uh, Velka, it is like the goddess of sin and justice, I think. Got it. She leaves. Uh, Guinevere, uh, the big titty daughter, yeah. she leaves with her husband, Flan. What is she in charge of again? She's the princess of sunlight. Isn't oh, it? Okay. Was, isn't it like, she's like a fertility goddess? Yeah, that too. Ah, that makes that sense. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um... Good clarification. And so also, um... The Gwyn, or Gwyn goes to the first flame, and he fucking, some like for life bitch, he uh, immolates himself in the first flame, and this keeps the flame going for an indeterminate amount of time. But the issue is, this sin thing that he did, uh, a huge issue with it, is that as flame fades later on, and I don't, I don't know if it happened initially, you know, it's very unclear, but as the flame will start to flame, as the flame will start to fade, because humanity is linked to the flame, we start, starts emerging in us is the curse of the undead. Oh. Mm -hmm. And so the curse of the undead means that, like, uh, if I, like, run a, th a sword through you right now, just dead, as you should be. Yeah, um, I'm a ginger. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, as soon as I pull the sword out, You'll just kind of like return to the last like bonfire you were around. This is the game mechanic. Mm, yeah. Is that whenever you die, you respawn the last bonfire. However, this is diegetic, meaning that like within the game that does happen, all the deaths are canon. Yeah. Because you were undead, so everyone just becomes these zombie creatures where they can't really die. Because if you put a sword through them, as soon as they're like put back together or like return to the bonfire or something, they just keep up, get back up, and keep on going. So, right. Okay. Good that's, thing or bad thing. So that that sounds good initially. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It sounds like immortality. But here's the issue: um, <laughs> the more you die, the more you go what's known as hollow, and hollow means you're returning to more be like that guy. <laughs> no. Um, okay. so, no. The, the like more times, goblin. the more times you die, the more you become like that guy, and the more sanity you. Oh, and so going fully hollow is kind of like metaphorical for like depression and like suicide it's and like glorification. Yeah, it's losing literally glorification for Fallout. This is all canon to Fallout. Yeah, got it. And so basically, if you just lose your sense of purpose, like if you're just awesome like me, and you just have a strong sense of purpose and like your place of life, you could keep dying a lot of time, times, and you're fine. Right. Yeah. And that's actually the canon <laughs> reason why you as a player do not go hollow. Because you, as a player, are want to keep playing the game mm -hmm. and keep going and fighting bosses. So your sense of purpose in a meta sense is actually like the internal oh, drive like Undertale. character. Like Undertale. Uh, like this like is Undertale. all came yeah. to Undertale. Yeah. Uh, so Gwyn linking humanity to the fire is what caused the undead curse? Yes. And uh, humanity is actually linked. This isn't just the stuff you put in the human's brains mm -hmm. about the fire and stuff. Yeah, so this is where we're going to talk about some primordial serpents. Yippee! Yay! So primordial creation, serpent. No creation myth is complete without a primordial serpent. This one up here, his name is King Secret Fram. Or Fram. Yeah. Uh, he's not. He's not smart. <laughs> oh no! And this guy down here, he's pretty cool. His name is Dark Stalker Koth. And he is the founder of my order, at Disabled Church. Yippee! Got him. Yeah. Yeah. Look at him. Yeah. Dark Stalker Koth. Dark Stalker Koth. Dark Sucker Cough! Okay, that so. That sounds like the Dark Sucker Cough. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> and so basically, with these two serpents, it is said in the lore they are failed. Uh, they are failed dragons. 
Got what it. does that mean? They were tried they, to be a dragon? Were, were, they, were they born like Seath and they're just born all misshapen and fucked don't up? Have did wings, Seath, don't have wings, don't yeah, have legs, don't have arms. Did Seath try to create the, create dragons and he ended up with them? Maybe. I don't know. Probably. Um, they're these giant, like, be surprised. penis looking things that come <laughs> out of the ground. They're like lizards and they talk to you. Are they like worms? They're snakes. I uh, know. They're, they're snakes, but they have human faces. I don't. Are they big or are they? Oh, like they're really size? big. Yes, but they don't have like any visible limbs. They're just like yes, yeah. like just smooth. What do they eat? Uh, are they immortal? Oh, you could feed them chunks. <laughs> oh, <you could laughs> chunks of chunks. what? You do that in the game. Yeah, you feed them <laughs> chunks already, buddy. Uh, what? Yep. <laughs> what? Yeah. No, you can in the game. The way you can kind of like sell items you don't need is you literally just feed them to the giant snake. I think got it. Okay. With, uh, oh, is that true? Yeah, I think it is. Okay. Well, but basically, what these two snake boys, they both are they're brothers, and they're born with opposing ideologies. What? Communism and capitalism. Yeah, they're brothers. Uh, but they're born, and also, uh, this is just my headcanon and uh, his as well. You never see them in the same place at once, and uh, you, you uh, it's always, not that they're the same guy, but we think they might be connected, like, because you never see the end of either of them. Oh, so they might be like, like one of these. That would be a that's, that's my, that's, my, that's our personal idea. That would be interesting. Anyways, um, Frant is super pro-god. So he loves the gods, he thinks the first flame should keep burning eternally. So, Franz is like, I'm going to keep finding great... Because after all, the gods are kind of fucked, right? Yeah. Because, uh, like, um, burning uh, a giant tree... Yeah, uh, he's just dead. He's taking a nap. He's taking a nap. And then so the there's other no one is just, like, no, nowhere. Yeah, so the gods are kind of like MIA, so we need big souls to feed to this fire. Yeah. And so Franz is like, I'll is go... Is he done burning? Huh? No, he's burning for a while. Just forever. He burns all the way until you meet him in the first game. Yeah. Which is an indeterminate, like, okay, hundreds sure. of thousands of years. Yeah, eons. Sure, 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 um, got it. So basically, uh, King Seeker Frompt is like, well, I'm going to go find more dudes to set on fire. So he goes around trying to find, essentially he's trying to find, um, he and, like, the gods, it's in kind of unclear who creates this, but there's a system of tests. There's like a place called Sense Fortress, which is like literally like Indiana Jones, like spikes are going through and all oh, this shit. Cool. Where it's supposed to test people to see if they're like eventually worthy to eventually link the flame. To be set on fire? Well, to get to Anorlando. So he oh, wants to test humans sacrifice. so they can do the same thing Gwyn did. Yeah, yeah he wants to test humans. He wants to like, he wants to do like natural selection of get only the best, strongest humans so they can link the fire. Because they have the best. Soul. He wants to only yeah. get the premium grade martyrs. Well, yeah, in this in this game series, when you kill some guy, you absorb his souls. So if you go around killing a lot of people, you keep absorbing their souls. Got it. So if you're a great warrior and you can survive all this shit, you must have a fuck ton of souls. Does it get bigger? Really what do you mean? Big it's bigger? Spirit. Your thing? My yeah, yeah, I, can't, my I can't yeah. say it. But you know, you know, oh, 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 my yeah. soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh. yeah there's an upgrade certain stats. Just there's, just a, there's a numerical larger. value assigned to souls for the purposes of leveling up. Okay, so technically, but, but yes. Size. Size? Like, well, your soul is not a <laughs> yeah, physical thing. It's proportional. Thing. I'm just going to say, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to imagine. Okay, so uh, Fromm sets up a series of things because he wants to. Keep the flame going. And the humans and want the flame to keep going, too, because if they don't, they've been, they all turn into impacts. Yeah, and they've been kind of also brainwashed into thinking that that's right. inherently good. Yeah. Now, Koth is a real motherfucker. Got it. And what Koth is like is that, like, look, darkness is cool, um, <laughs> and that humanity, their natural soul, their soul is of darkness. Um, and it's basically, the idea is, his truth that's at the core of the Sable Church, uh, donate, um, the Sable Church is noble truth they hold, is the idea that Gwyn has artificially prolonged the Age of Fire. Because we were in the Age of Ancients, now we're in the Age of Fire. But yeah. he, what Koth and the Sable Church say is basically that when the flame burns out, there'll be an Age of Dark. And that will be the Age of Humanity. God. And oh, so cool. what's happened is the Age of Dark was supposed to happen, but it hasn't. And so what Koth is like, I need to stop this flame at, at all costs and bring about the Age of Dark and the Age of Humanity. Because he thinks these human people are pretty cool. Yeah. And he is, he is a human. Yeah. Kind of. Is that why Gwyn was afraid of humans? I mean, yeah, yes. So that is the, the safe reason is that Gwyn apparently has some knowledge of this Age of Dark. And he knows that humans will inherit the Earth. 
So that's why he kind of like fucked over humans and did the first sin. Got it. Who is, who is exactly benefiting from his plan to prolong the fire? Him for a while. But he's, he's on, just fire. on fire. He's just sitting there on yeah. fire, and then well, his friend like, is a tree, and his other friend's taking like a, a nap. City. It seems like a real he's, half-baked plan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No one really benefits from. I never thought about that. I mean, yeah. what's 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 yeah. Dragon Guy doing during all this? Oh, he's chilling. He's not. He's actually he's just going around, just being evil. He's the real mastermind. By the time we get to Dark Souls Three, which is like in the timeline is so much, so much further. Gwyn's descendants are still around. Mm -hmm. So the race of gods did benefit from the continuation of the Age of Fire. He himself did not really benefit directly. <laughs> um, but his family and his, his people are still around. Where are they at? Because they're not at that one place no, anymore, right? Um, right? We'll, we'll get to that. Oh, They've okay. moved to other lands, basically. Got it. Well, they were at Anerlando for a while. They were at Anerlando in the Lordran surrounding it for a while. So you can participate if you want to. Oh, I, I know. I just know nothing about this. I don't either. I'm just asking questions. Yeah, it's fun to ask questions. Anyways. That goes for you too, audience. Uh-huh. And so, ask in the comments. Tell us what your favorite, <laughs> your favorite Dark okay, okay. Souls is. So this is where Dark Star Cough <laughs> oh, makes it. This is... Oh, <laughs> oh, no. Is it loaded? Yep. Did it? Oh, it didn't fire. It's ready? There, there we go. go. There we go. <laughs> this is where uh, Dark Star Cough does an unambiguously good and totally not evil thing. Oh, because yeah. the Sable Church are good people, and I would never lie to you. I love totally good, not ambiguous yeah, evil things. Yeah, definitely, it's definitely a and so, positive thing. And so this boy right here, Koth, he goes to a town known as Ulasil. And he's like, hey guys, Ooh, you know how good. to become cooler, bigger humans? Well, what? the Furtive <laughs> Pigny... Yeah, yeah. So remember that guy, the Furtive Pigny? Yeah. He dead. Yeah. Because uh, he was mortal, much like... Uh, these other people. No, like the other guys. Yeah. Well, no, no, he's, he's uh, probably died of old age. Humans uh, died of old age. Oh, so he can do that. Yeah, and so his body is just in like a ditch somewhere, I guess. Um, <laughs> Got it. He's and they're like, grave. well, here's the thing. His soul is the purest humanity. It's so pure a uh, soul, a uh, soul of man, the soul of darkness, the dark soul. He <laughs> is dark soul. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 But he's so, he's so full of darkness that his, his soul has the ability to create something known as the Abyss. And he's like, human sounds nice. Do you remember how I like the Agent Dark? Mm -hmm. Dude, if you fucking, if you feed on, if you like fuck with his corpse, cool shit will happen. <laughs> oh, dude, what? Like, was, yeah. What'd they do to his corpse? <laughs> oh no. So, oh no, what did they do to his corpse? We don't exactly know, but essentially, it, it, the corpse is fucked with. Got and it. instead of making them really cool, he took a cord around him. Instead, eyes. he wakes up and he transforms whatever experiment I, uh, to that. Manus, father of the abyss. <laughs> Got um, it, okay. Think about like werewolf, giant spikes coming out of his head. Uh, he's one got a jacked staff. arm? Yeah, he does have one jacked arm. Got it, okay. The arm is actually made of magic in the game. Yeah. Mm. And he is starts spreading the abyss, which is like pure humanity, like pure uncut black tar heroin humanity. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> and it starts turning everyone into like evil corrupted zombies and it's not good. It doesn't oh. seem like yeah, human. And so the knights of Art yeah. or the knights Does of Wynn from beforehand <laughs> are still around, right? Um, Artorius, namely so, mm -hmm. goes down there to go fight him. However, um, during his he leaves his shield with his uh, puppy Sif. Uh, who's Johnny. a puppy at this point. Yeah, yeah. Still but puppy. doesn't he leave the shield after he tries to fight him the first time? It's unclear. Like he goes to, I think it's, he gets his arm broken, that's yeah. why he leaves his shield with yeah. Sith. So he goes down with Sith to go fight um, Manus, Father of the Abyss, gets his arm broken. When you go find Artorius in the game, he, one of his arms is hanging limp, and it seems like the armor may be the only thing still connecting his arm to the rest of his body. Oh, um, and so he guess runs out or something, he leaves his um, his puppy with a shield to protect it from uh, the evil darkness of Manus. Does so I know how to use the shield? It um, will Sif time. will help you fight Manus. So oh, Sif's a, he's a good puppy. Boy. Um, he doesn't use the shield though. No, no. no. But he's, he's being protected by it. He's no a good Captain boy. Captain America dog. <laughs> exactly. So Sif is um, a puppy at this point, but puppy Sif means like the size of like a normal dog. Like yeah. he's, he's quite... He's a giant wolf he's later. A yeah, large yeah. Man. Um, and so Artorius goes over and he's eventually consumed by the abyss and he goes mad. Um, because once again, when you go hollow or like corrupted by the abyss, you just become like a mindless zombie. Does he work for him now? 
Mm -hmm. Huh? Does he work for him? Yeah. No, he's, he's just kind of he, he's just kind of mad. Like oh, he's just running yeah. around. Like <laughs> okay. when you when you find him in the game, he is just feasting like on the corpses of like oh, other nice. people. Cool. And right. so this is a point in which you're. Can't. So you as the protagonist of Dark Souls One are the chosen undead. In the DLC, you were sent back in time to the time of Artorius. Okay. You slay Artorius, um, put him out of his misery. You kill an ancient dragon that was still around. Well, not ancient dragon, but like a dragon. A dragon that was still around. Akatosh. Um, yes, it was Akatosh. Yeah, you kill Akatosh. And you go save Puppy Sif from the urban violence of the abyss. And yeah, he comes yeah. out, and he goes and grows up to be a good puppy later on. Why'd you do that? And the chosen undead slays Manus. However. This may not be the last we hear of the dark soul of Manus. His abyss <laughs> is not subsided. Because just because you kill that guy doesn't mean he's gone for good. Right, because there's the bonfire system. Well, just his element of, like, dead. Of, no, not no, no, dead, no, of dead, of abyss. Of darkness. Of darkness. What? Of human and darkness. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, my so, element is human. Yeah. Do, the, do the human imps, yeah. do they... Wait, the mind. hollows. Never mind. Never okay. Mind. Hollows, so, hollows use the bonfire system. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. that's how they turn more crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so Darkstalker Koth is like, oh, that was funny as shit. Let's try that again. <laughs> so he goes to another town called New Long. Once again, he's a good guy who's done nothing wrong. I just want to read Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, so he goes to a town called New Londo, uh, and he's like, dude. New Londo. Uh, take this. I have this spell called Life Drain where you drain the humanity of another person. Start feeding off the humanity of each other. And so everyone turns <laughs> evil, and they become a bunch of disgusting monsters. No way. Good thing. And so also, there are these people named the Four Kings, who are the rulers of New Londo, and they've been imbued with a small part of Gwyn's soul. And they go mad and go crazy, so they're not doing so good either. Yeah. Won't humans absorbing each other's, you know, Humanity. thing, um, <laughs> won't that... Sort of gotta at least find put them on the right the direction to so yeah, work for that spirit. guy because yes. they're getting stronger as well. Well, feeding on humanity is implied to be different than just keep feeding on their souls. Oh, okay, sure. It's like consuming like their essence. Mm. Let's do different currencies. Yeah, yeah I guess yeah, so. Yeah. We've got the no, premium though. currency. <laughs> yeah, and then you're just eating the normal currency. Is there yeah. a conversion rate? Yeah, sure. And so. Ah, 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 ah. This is kind of what I was talking about earlier with Nito's version of death versus the undead curse. Okay. Nito's death is true, Nito's death is final. This new world that you're plunged into is really fucked up. And so, basically, there's a legend that's created among the undead that eventually a guy will come to Lord Rand and he will link the fire. And so, in Astora, which is this one random kingdom, it isn't really that important. Um, they start sending, a, the nobles start sending a bunch of, those who aren't hollow, or aren't hollow yet, start sending a bunch of people to the undead asylum. Um, where they, <laughs> this, it's like, hey buddy, uh, you're, oh, you're like starting to go like undead and like crazy. You can just kind of go, just go in this hole and just like go crazy so with just your like friends. an open pit yeah. line? And no, it's like, it's a prison. Okay. And there's a demon that's like the jail keeper. Oh, that's fun. Make sure they don't get out. Yeah. So... So the demons people, are just like integrated. Yeah. No, no, no. Integrated this yet? is it's almost like you know, like a putting alligators in a moat. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. That's the, he's like a big fat dude with a club. <laughs> yeah. He is just like a primal word. Sorry. Are there people just like with with like jobs and stuff? Yeah. There are people. Like there are people just like okay. Here's the thing. So the undead curse. Society. When the undead curse first starts, it doesn't go to everyone immediately. Eventually it does, but it doesn't go to everyone immediately. But just because you're undead does not mean you're completely fucked. Because as long as you're not hollow, because I, I mean, I think technically I guess perfect. you could just become hollow without dying at all if you just get really depressed, I guess. Ooh, but so typically it takes like multiple deaths to finally go hollow. Right. So you there are people still need to like eat and stuff then. I, I don't know about that part. I'm just. Mm. Yeah. I'm just saying, if I were in yeah. in this game and yeah. I were a lowly farmer, yeah. I would I would quit my job. Yeah, yeah, I know. I feel you. Yeah, yeah. yeah so society I don't has you to all society has decayed quite a bit by the it's time you find purpose. it. However, because of the fact that having a purpose is what stops you from going hollow, a lot of the institutions that still exist are like orders of knights or that kind of stuff because they have like a My questing purpose is to kill yeah. all demons an impossible task that exactly exactly them. and so this takes us to the events of dark souls one you are a lonely undead sitting in a jail oscar of astora 
is a knight from Astora. The place has been sending these people mm -hmm. to uh, Guantanamo Bay. I mean, the undead asylum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he comes We're down, he drops you a key, and he's like, bro, get out of your cell. Fucking, like, do shit. <laughs> and then he's killed by a demon before you can... Or he's mortally wounded by a demon that, uh, demon that yeah, like, yeah. Uh, is mm -hmm. there. Uh, before you can do anything, uh, you go find him while he's dying. Uh, he gives you an Estus flask. An Estus flask... Um, it's not really said what Estus is. Like, it's some sort of essence of life or a fire. Yeah. I think it is fire. Fire. Yeah, it's a little bottle of fire, like and it's what heals you in the game. Yeah, that's best. As he gives you the Estus flask, uh, and then he dies. He basically says, go fulfill the prophecy to go link the fire. Mm -hmm. And so, this with is the this first... bottle of fire or with your soul? With your soul. Okay. Uh, so this is where we start Dark Souls 1. Can I get a video games? Video, video games. games! Video games! Video games! Alright, yeah, so basically, yeah, yeah. Legend of Zelda you had to lore drain it. Um, you fucking ring the bells of awakening. And what those do is they wake up this guy. Ah. And in this game, you can you can choose to basically follow that guy or follow that guy. Mm -hmm. But regardless, the th big serpents are woken up. Yeah. Do you have any sort of opinion as to which <laughs> guy you should choose? Follow, is there any sort of like <laughs> any sort of preference Listen. that you have? Mm -hmm. None. I am impartial. I'm okay. fair and balanced. I'm <laughs> fair and balanced. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's, guys. So you're saying you you equally like the pro god and pro human ones? Totally. I am unbiased. Got it. Just reporting okay. the facts. What's, mm -hmm. Yeah. What's the motivation for you? You escape the jail that they sent you to because you're turning into a zombie pretty yeah. much. And now you're just like... Oh, Might as well go kill everybody. Better go set myself on fire. Well, you're basically following the propaganda from Gwen, right? Like, yeah. They tell you oh, it's right. good I to keep go yeah. to light the fire. And within the game, think about it. If you're a player Gwen. playing the game, you are being told by all the NPCs this is a good thing. Like, yeah. it's just, it's, yeah, like yeah. I'm sitting down playing the game, I'm being told it's a good thing. You don't have time when you're first playing the game to have an existential crisis. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. Got so it. basically, you go ring the bells of awakening, go. you make it through Sen's Fortress, you go to An Orlando. However, a, a note I have here is that there's a knight named Iron Tarkus. And you were only the second undead to ever make it through Sen's Fortress. Oh, wow. Iron Tarkus was the first. And he went made it to An Orlando. And later in the game, when you get through An Orlando, there's a place that's impassable. However, there's a um, basically you can't get from one spot to there's a but there's a hole in a window where someone's crashed through like a, like the a thing of this cathedral this window yeah. and the roof okay. and like walk you can like have to navigate the ceiling beams to go and like progress but Iron Tarkus was the dude who busted that hole for you <laughs> and he was later uh, was um, killed and fell to his death um, but he is the like the real honestly he's pretty awesome in that he. Without his sacrifice, you Dark Souls, to yeah, you wouldn't have been able to do it. So I just want to, you know, pour one out for uh, yeah. Iron Knight Targus. Yeah. Out. Your character probably could have broken the window. Like, it didn't, it's just glass. Shut the fuck up. Is that all he did? <laughs> <laughs> he, he broke the window and then tripped off the rafters and it died. fell to his death. Do you, That's do you very see his body interesting. At the bottom? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. 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 Oh. That's kind of cool. He has well, that's that's a little unceremonious. And so, does he not have the bonfire system? He went hollow, right? Yeah. At the bottom? Yeah. I guess so. He lost. Actually, why didn't he come back? Because he was he just crazy back. at yeah. the bottom. I don't. No, he's dead. He's dead. He's, he's just dead. dead. <laughs> so there's there. He got the true death. death. Yeah. Shit. True death. Maybe eventually he'd come back. I don't know. Okay. I don't know how this shit works. Um, but also... Death is a very strange thing in this universe. Yeah, exactly. So you go and you fight at the, um, the cathedral where Gwyn, like, used to live or whatever. Um, you go and you fight Ornstein and Smo. Smo is an executioner, is the royal executioner. He's a cannibal. Smo? Um, yeah. That's, Ornstein, a pretty, that's a pretty good profession for a cannibal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cool, They're cool dudes. Um, and you beat them. However, it is later stated, maybe not stated, it's later commonly held that the Ornstein you fought there was actually an illusion, but Smo okay. was real. And so you go and there's a, a illusion of Guinevere, of the big titty lady that's been created mm. by Gwendolyn, who is an optional boss, who tells you to go uh, get the Lord Souls and link the fire. And so you go to Lost Isola, you uh, put her out of her misery, you kill her, um, the tree, and you get the yeah. you get her soul, right? Yeah. You go to um, seek the scalas, and you fucking murder. You fu thank God. Yeah. yeah. Let's just let's face it. Let's face it. Yeah. Seath yeah. was not a good guy. Yeah. yeah. Seath. 
You take the part of the soul that Gwyn gave him. Right? Yeah, you, you take the Gwyn gave him. Yeah. Is Seath pretty easy to kill then? Because he's like scaleless and stupid. He's not a hard is boss. Dark. Yeah, I almost said the word. Mm -hmm. He's a dark spirits boss. Yeah. We've been talking for an hour, and my storage is seventy five percent full. Ooh. <laughs> do you want to? Uh, do you have other stuff on the camera? Do pre uh, I do, but it's a bunch of photos that don't mm -hmm. take up that much space. Yeah. Say so we could dump it onto a. Uh, a flash drive, yeah. even. Okay. Yeah. Brief so if, let me, yeah, let me know when we're about to hit it and uh, okay. we can okay. it over. All right. So the get this back up. Fuck you. Um, because I have an SD card reader. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. So you go. You kill Numanto. You kill the four kings. Yeah. Um, you fight. You go you underground, and you kill Nito. Uh, Nito no. really makes no like. Neo did nothing wrong in my view. Just, because he's he, just sleeping. Yeah. He introduced the concept of death. Everybody else said fuck that concept, and yeah. then he went to sleep. Well, to be yeah. fair, it's the concept of death. I mean, right, but that's kind right. of important in life. Yeah. I, and I, you I, go okay. and you uh, you kill Gwyn, and so. Oh, you kill him. Yeah. Gwyn. Yeah. In the fire. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. And then you jump in the fire. So that's the thing is that you can choose either to link the fire or not link the fire. Within the canon of the game, someone links the fire. Got is it. it your player character? Is it just somebody else? It happens, right? Yeah. So the fire is linked and it continues to burn. Yes. And so we get in between Dark Souls One and Dark Souls Two, where there's a huge time skip. Uh, countless kingdoms rise and fall. Got it. Thousands of years. Um, and so this is there's a the thing in Dark Souls Two is called the Throne of One. Extensively, it's the kiln of the first flame. So just think about that. Like the Got it. Of the first flame. Um. So tales are told, and this is like a holder of this old religion, that if a strong enough king with enough power sits upon it, he can link fire and become the true ruler of the world. And right. so this is where the Daughters of the Abyss come in. Where you remember Manus when he died? Yeah. Little fragments of his soul uh, are born as these four daughters, Nishandra, Ilana, Nidalia, and Alsana. Um, and so where Dark Souls 2 takes place is called the Kingdom of Drain Lake. It's a separate geographical place from where Dark Souls 1 uh, took over. A different continent-ish. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Can I make a brief little like, thing to the audience? Yeah. If you guys played Cultist Simulator, this is just like the fracturing during the intercalate of the Sun and Splendor. Thank you. Because the Sun gets divided into four parts, and one of them is the Moon. Okay, so first okay. the kingdom of Ven forms under a guy named the Old Iron King, who's a reincarnation of Gwyn. Because reincarnation of course, yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's he another gets way a, to not die. He has a noble knight beside him named Sir Lon, who is a samurai, so he's from fantasy Japan. Got it. And uh, he marries Alsana, one of the daughters of the Abyss. He does not know that she is part of uh, Man. He doesn't know that she's um, like a folk leader. And she's like, yo, keep keep mining. Mining is great. You can keep doing it. <laughs> oh, no. It, <laughs> gotta <mine>. go down. <laughs> and so, it, assumably, he mines very deep and even at night, which I've heard is strictly for <laughs> No. Um, don't don't mine at night. night. No, and he uh, poisons his realm by unleashing demons. And then he becomes a disgusting lava monster. Where were the demons? And again? Yeah. Where this is a separate lava monster from yeah. the previous one. Yeah. They were just underground. underground. Well, yeah. Wasn't his kingdom already built on top of a lake of lava? Yeah, but he went deep enough he woke up with demons. Okay. Got it. Okay. So are these the same demons as before? Yeah. Or is this like a separate... It's the same thing? race of demons. Is the got chaos it. flame still burning even though yeah, the lady it's got it's still killed? Burning. I thought the lady was in the fire. Well, she was, but it's still burning. Oh, okay, cool. Got it. There, my headcanon is, can you imagine if there was, like, a demon version of our player character <laughs> yeah, in uh, Dark Souls who went and linked to the Chaos Flame? That'd be silly. That'd, That'd be, be cool. silly. Uh, next, the Ferosa Kingdom rises under the Ivory King. The Ivory King um, marries a different daughter of the Abyss. What's her name? Uh, Elana. And uh, he... Because the, the, basically, the Daughters of the Abyss... They want the first flame for some reason, mm -hmm. and so they keep marrying. They present themselves as sexy women, even though they are like their true form are like these hideous, disgusting monsters. I agree. Yeah, that sounds like my ex-wife. Hey, <laughs> and um, come on. <laughs> and basically, they go and they try to take over kingdoms. Uh, the Ivory King is consumed uh, by the Chaos Flame as well. R.I.P. Mm -hmm. uh, the Kingdom of Sola oh. is founded by dragon worshippers who find a giant sleeping ancient dragon. 
Um, an actual ancient dragon this time, or a descendant of an ancient it's dragon? It's that guy. <laughs> Got it, um, okay. And basically, um, the, this, the king is named the Sunken King. Wait for it. He marries the daughter of the Abyss. No. Um, and oh, well, these Drake Blood Knights show up, which are apparently an order of knights that are uh, worship dragon blood, and they want to get some sick dragon blood. Um, so they go to go like poke that dragon, and they wake it up, and poking a big creature. The kingdom is destroyed. Um, <laughs> By so one now, dragon. Um, dragon. He was really strong. He, he was really <laughs> strong. Um, well, there was a war going on, and then a dragon woke up. Oh, okay. just like so, Skyrim. Just like Skyrim. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. So, um, the, the when. This Basically, is also canon well, to Skyrim. Yeah. Monster, so, yeah. Vendrick, well, Vendrick is a king who emerges. He uh, conquers and founds the kingdom of Drain Lake, and he has a brother named Aldia, who's very important. He has a huge brain, wow. and Aldia is super cool. Wow. Um, so, however, Vendrick has one issue, which is that he marries Nishandra, who, as you guessed, is another aspect of Manus the Abyss. And dog. she's like, you know what it would make me like even hotter, possibly, and our sex life even better? If you were to go across the sea and conquer the land of giants. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, I think she told him that they were going to attack him. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'm joking. This is <laughs> yeah, a joke. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She manipulates her husband to Into a war. Attack, And he fucks them up, and then he's like, all right, and he comes back home. So are the daughters of the abyss good because they want to make the darkness? We don't really know what they want. Is the issue? Oh, mm. yeah, ambiguous. They just like chaos. They want to control the flame. We don't know what that means though. Got it. Do they want to snuff it out? Do they, they want, want to it. like just like keep it going? But they are in charge. We don't really know. Um, so that is what it is. Um, basically, however, when he comes back, he's like, "Yeah, fuck them giants." <laughs> um, however, yeah, those giants are not destroyed, and so the giants launch a counter invasion across the sea oh. and invade Drain Lake. Um, so this with the telephone pole archer guy, huh? Yeah. Different giants or the same uh, giants? He looks kind of like them. They might be the same race, Got probably it. a different country. You know, you think okay. all giants look alike? Yeah. <laughs> if, there's, if there's a land of giants, maybe. Yeah, well, there's various giant characters throughout this entire Got series, it. so assumably okay. there is a place where giants live. Got it. Um, basically, the war ensues, and Vendrick comes to realize that his wife is evil. Yeah. Do giants have Curse of the Undead? That's unclear. Or hmm. bonfire mechanics? I don't know. Well, it's unclear as to whether they're, like, human... I think it's, it's implied it's only humanity that has the bonfire yeah. stuff. Okay. So they may not have the bonfire. They might be undead. I don't, I don't know think that. giants respawn in the games if you kill them. It's true. Although, didn't... Well, it becomes an issue with Yorn, right? What about it? Because he links the flame. I get, they still have souls. I guess. Oh, god damn it. He said the thing. Yeah. There you go. We did it. <laughs> All right, so Professor Doctor may also have a gun so that he doesn't have to just shoot himself when he says the word. There you go. Sure. All right, so that one's definitely more powerful than this yeah. one. Yeah. Don't worry. So it'll be the far, far basically, mm -hmm. basically, I'll just hide behind you. Oh, uh, when he comes back, Vendrick realizes who his wife is, and she wants him to go link the flame. He says, "Fuck that shit," and locks himself down in a crypt uh, with his homie Velstad, <laughs> who is smart. the uh, royal protector. And uh, during this time, Aldia is, realizes that he learns about the first sin. And he decides that he is going to fucking bring about the Age of Man. Nice. He's going to snuff out every bonfire in yeah. the main fire? I guess so. He researches souls, he tries to figure out a cure for the undead curse, and he creates the Emerald Herald, who is yet another dragon-human hybrid. The Chaos no, the Emeralds. Emeralds! Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's this pretty cool. Canada Sonic? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And also, he fuses himself to the bonfire system itself, and becomes like an omnipotent god of the bonfires or something. Can that's I teleport awesome. between them? Yeah. I guess he can, literally. That's pretty oh, that's cool. Awesome. That's pretty cool. I think it's not clear system. whether he did that on purpose or it was uh, an accident. It's still pretty... He appears He appears to you in the game as a giant flaming face in a bonfire. That's pretty that's cool. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. And so, in Dark Souls 2, you are the bearer of the curse. You come to Drain Lake to seek the cure. You meet the Emerald Herald and Nishandra, and Nishandra's like, Yo, I'm just a cool, I'm a hot woman. Mm -hmm. You need to kill my husband. 
and the four great souls, which are reincarnations of those guys. Yeah. Uh, and you need to, like, link the fire. Uh, so you kill the Old Iron King, who's a reincarnation of Gwyn, the Lost Sinner, who's a reincarnation of the Witch of Isolith, the Rotten, which has the soul of Nido, and then finally the Duke's dearest, Freya, where the, her Duke had his yeah. soul. Do they um, know their reincarnations of their former selves? No. Okay. And so, uh, Nishandra's like, go kill Vendrick. Um, and when you go down, you basically discover as you're going down to go kill Vendrick that she's the person who fucked all this up. And uh, you meet with Aldia, who is red-pilled as fuck, and you receive something called the Ash and Mist and Heart, which allows you to go into people's memories. Oh. oh. Um, so you enter a memory of an old giant lord and get his soul and use it to be super fucking powerful. You just, like, um, absorb it? Or yeah. You, okay. And so you go and you kill Nishandra, and Aldio basically tells you you shouldn't link the fire, but assumably it does happen because more games happen within <laughs> a, a link yeah. fire. So, once again, the, the thing here is, like, if, even if you personally didn't link the fire, somebody, somebody, somebody did. Um, and so now we're going to get even more. So, in between 2 and 3, we're going to go back to the geographical location of Lordran. Like this area, yeah, maybe so back this to kingdom, DS1. continent, that, that area of the world. And so many kingdoms mm -hmm. rise and fall. Uh, the Nameless King, the firstborn of Gwyn, founds Archdragon Peak, which is a cool little like area where he hangs out with his dragon friends, as well as Hornstein, who mm -hmm. turns himself into a dragon, so that, wait for it, the Nameless King can ride him into battle. That's sick. That's it is sick. That's pretty cool. He, so the Nameless King, King is alive? alive? Yeah, he's chilling. Sick. Yeah. How did Ornstein turn himself into a dragon? Dark Souls. <laughs> uh, I, there's a thing <laughs> called the Path of the Dragon. Which, yeah, exactly. That's logic. Yeah. Um, so here's the thing. There's many. So what Gwyn was when he linked the fire, and what you, the player characters, became is Lords of Cinder. That means you've linked the fire. Many more Lords of Cinder happen. So Ludlith the Pygmy Lord. Once again, think of this guy. Yeah. He's exiled from his Pygmy kingdom, assumably the Ring City. Wait, I thought he turned into that guy. No, no, this is a different guy. Oh, okay. He just looks like him. Oh, okay. And he gets this thing called a skull ring, which he, like, absorbs people's souls. And so he just goes around as, like, this little, as this little, like, you know, dude just, like, killing people, like, <laughs> sneakily and stealing their souls. He's and a he, rogue from the Yeah, movie. going goblin mode. And he gets so powerful <laughs> that he is able to link the first flame. Uh, so, Fantastic. yay, Ludlith of Corland. So he's the interim player character that we don't get to play. Exactly. We're going to have to get to a few of these. Karthus is a desert, um, and is assumably where Undeadburg in the first game used to be because of the chaos. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Undeadburg? Yeah, that's a place. Yeah. <laughs> okay, continue. Immerses a powerful kingdom under High Lord Wolnir, but High Lord Wolnir physically falls into the abyss, and when you find him as a boss, he's literally a giant skeleton who's trying to claw himself out of the abyss. Oh. oh did okay. he slip on a banana peel? It's highly <laughs> possible. All right, so the Abyss Watchers, a.k.a. the Undead Legion of Farron, seek out the Abyss and fight it. They are a, like, um, a or order of knights that fight the Abyss. Um, and so they all drink the blood of a wolf. Um, not, and so this, that, not the wolf that has been mentioned before. Sif, yeah. Wolf. Yeah, so it might have been a reincarnation of Sif that might happen. But What's they that? all partake in this old wolf's blood and fuse to, to become one soul. And they link the fire. Okay, so a bunch like of people share one essence. Yes. That is used to fuel. It's the a flame. great boss fight because you fight like uh, three of them at once. That's okay. pretty awesome. That's pretty um, awesome. And so as the flame fades, uh, they become a lord of cinder. However, one guy does desert, and he has not partaken the wolf blood. His name's Hawkwood, mm. and he'll become important later. Okay. Hawkwood. Because he's like, I don't want to be burned alive. <laughs> yeah. Because that doesn't sound fun. Next is a guy named Yorm. Who's a giant? He is the descendant of the giant's Vendrick Flaw, who's I hanging out. Him earlier is an exception. Yeah, so he becomes friends with this guy named Sigurd, who's a little onion knight, Sigurd. like a knight who has an armor that looks like an onion. Oh, that's <laughs> sick. Yeah. <laughs> and so he becomes the ruler of this uh, city. It's later known as Profane Capital. We don't know what it was originally called. Profanity Capital. And they're all afraid of him because he's a big fucking giant. But yeah. he's like, here, I have these two swords, um, or I guess three maybe. But he has a sword called a Storm Ruler. It's a big old fucking sword. And he's like, if I ever go mad and like lose my shit, here's a storm ruler. You can fight me. Uh, you can use this to kill me because I'm that based. Got it. Okay. Um, 
And he also gives one to Sigurd. Uh, yeah. And he's especially weak to the Storm Ruler? He's especially weak to the Storm Ruler. Uh, I guess it's made of whatever fucking giant jizz that he's made of. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. That's and so, uh, he basically tells Sigurd, and like, if I ever betray my duty, use that sword and fucking That was not kill intentional. Him. Good job. Um, so, citizens want to use, they find this thing that's called the profane flame, which is basically the chaos demon flame. That's mm -hmm. basically what it is. The chaos flame. Um, and they're like, well, if the first thing's fading, we'll just use this one. And it doesn't <laughs> Wait, work. wait, what? Yeah. Uh, and Yorm, Yorm's like, no, no, don't use it. Don't use it. Oh, go link the fire. And Yorm links the fire, but then they use it anyways, and everybody dies. Ah, uh, so, so Yorm, yeah. In well, time. not everyone in that city. Oh, okay. Um, and so now Yorm is Fuel burning. Fuel chaos flame, too? Another huh? tree? No, no, he's in the, he's in the regular uh, Right, right. Fire. Yorm is in regular fire. What's the, is this a third fire, or is this the chaos fire again that's in the town? This is just the chaos fire in the town. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Isn't it ambiguous as to whether it's a new fire or the chaos fire? Yeah. It's probably a piece of the chaos fire. Yeah. Really God, yeah. Does it make another demon tree thing? No. Oh, just kill everyone? Just kills everybody. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, and so basically, during this, uh, Gwendolyn, who's still very much alive, um, gathers a bunch of nobles who are descended from the old gods and goes to the Boreal Valley, where they found the city of Ith Irithyll? Irithyll. Oh, we're going with Irithyll. Irithyll. Um, I haven't said that out loud in a while. And so he claims the title of King of the Gods, since it's kind of vacant, because uh, Daddy went, ah! Yeah, yeah, he um, went into the fire a long yeah. time ago. And so he found, and he, he rules the King of the Gods, and he basically gets all of the people of the God race and of that old bloodline that are left, mm. and they hang out there. Got it. The sky the named, friendly kingdom of... Yes, yeah, exactly. That's, that's how kingdoms work. With so blood there's blood. a guy named. Uh, I need to get. So during this whole time, there's been a, a worlds in a painting. Don't ask. So there are these Wait, there are these paint magic paintings that have worlds inside them. Okay. Like Harry Potter. Like Harry Potter. <laughs> Super Mario Brothers. No, literally yes. So that has existed. Okay, just deal with that. Okay, yeah. that has existed a magical artifact. Someone is born from a magic tree in a painting. He's a man. Oh, no. His mother is a magic tree. Don't and just, bomb? just don't <laughs> just just keep so with Dark Souls. Sometimes you just have to like accept sure, things. Sure. Yeah. Okay. His name is uh, it's 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 spelled like phonetically, so it's supposed to be Pontiff Sullivan, but it also looks like it could be Sullivan, and it's way funnier if he's Sullivan. Okay. But Pontiff Sullivan. Yeah, and he is born in this painted world as a son of a feral tree woman, and he leaves a painting in order to go walk the earth and find himself. And so he goes on an epic okay. journey. He yeah. kind of breaks the fourth wall and yeah. saves his world. Yeah. So it's sort of like a fun coming of age story. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that. Got it. And so he goes and he um, he finds the profane flame and gets the profane flame great sword, which he uses. And it's possible that he might have caused whatever from happens there. From the fire. Got it. Yeah. He gets the sword from the fire. Mm -hmm. A second curse. Next, fire. he infiltrates the like the elite order of knights of uh, Dark Sun Gwendolyn. And presents two knights with these rings that secretly bend him to his will, much like the Nazgul from Lord of the Rings. Got it. Okay. Um, one of them is Vort, who gets a ring and eventually he turns into kind of like a beast man. Yeah. And the other is the Dancer, who is a d vaguely related to Guinevere, um, so she's of royalty. Yeah. And she slowly becomes a weird, like, monster woman. So that's cool. Um, Solovan emerges in... Uh, Irithil, and he becomes a holy cleric. Or, sorry, um, there's a guy named Aldrich who emerges, and he becomes a holy cleric of this religion of the gods. But he keeps getting these, these dreams of these eldritch horrors known as the Age of the Deep. Mm. And so to increase his power, Aldrich is like... Is this I a different age, like dark, like possibly. fire? Yeah, okay. we don't it know. It seems pretty similar, though, because the so, other one was called the Abyss. Or whatever, right? Look, during this during the time between uh, Dark Souls One and Dark Souls Two, uh, FromSoft was also making a game known as Bloodborne, which um, is basically uh, like a Lovecraftian thing. This is possibly all just a ham-fisted reference to uh, that. Bloodborne that's not really congruous with the rest of the lore. Got it. It's up for you awesome. to decide. Um, Ultra is yeah. like, well, I need to keep getting power, uh, keep increasing power to keep come becoming a better cleric. So he yeah. starts eating people. <laughs> As you do, yeah. yeah. His priests think this is fucking sick. Um, As in, this is awesome, or yeah. this is terrifying. No, 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 like awesome. Okay, got and it. eventually he goes from a proper cleric to a leader of a cannibalistic death cult. As you do. And he meets so many people, he becomes a pit of sludge. 
<laughs> no, I right? hate when that happens. <laughs> and at some point, they need to link the fire again. And uh, also during this time, this Solovon becomes a part of his cult, just because he wants to manipulate him. Mm. And so they need someone to link the fire. So they all just poke the sludge pit. And they're like, Aldrich, you're the only one powerful enough to go link the fire. Please go do that. And so I guess maybe they put him in a bucket, but and just like kind of like throw him in there. But that doesn't happen. Gas the fire, fuels it. Yes. Like so pouring gas. He links the, the fire. Okay. Next, Prince we're almost Cinder. over. Dark Souls Three. Yes. So solely on force. Aldrich. He, he manipulates Aldrich into doing so. So, the kingdom of Lothric is founded under a bloodline that eventually culminates in a guy named Osiris, this consumed king. Osiris. And Osiris, uh, assumably they're of some like godly lineage. However, he marries a long-lost descendant of Guinevere. So, his mm. kids are a direct uh, descendant of Gwyn. Yeah. And they have three kids, uh, Lorien, Lothric, and Ocelot. Uh, yep. <laughs> Ocelot? Lorien becomes a great knight okay. uh, and slays a demon prince. That's pretty cool. That's cool. So the royal family of Lothric is prophesied to produce an heir strong enough to link the fire. But apparently Lorien can't do this for some reason. Okay. However, their second son, Lothric, is prophesied to be the one who will link the fire. Okay. And they have trouble producing a son. I guess they have fertility issues now. Yeah. Um, okay. And so they have to do a bunch of like fucked up dark magic in order to have a second baby. And That's whatever good. does this causes Lothric to be born cursed and mangled, which just means oh. he's kind of like a cripple. Sounds, uh, pretty, sounds pretty moon-sided to me. It does sound pretty moon-sided yeah. to me. Wow. Um, and his, in order to like help him, his strong warrior brother Lorien links their souls together to share in the curse. Ah. So he's a good big brother, I guess. Although oh, there's some like weird like, kind of like, help your sacrifice. There's like some like incesty vibes going on when you meet them in the games. So, oh, oh yeah, okay. Um, maybe not. So my remark earlier was correct. Yeah. Lothric still becomes a powerful wizard, and he's tutored by a, a scholar who might be Aldia, because his title is the Scholar of First Sin. Mm. Um, and he, he's like, and the, whoever the scholar is, which is why we think it's Aldia, he's like, Lothric, don't lick the fire. It hurts. <laughs> and so he's like, ooh, maybe I don't want to do that. Okay. And eventually, Osiris uh, comes under the influence of these guys called the Crystal Sages, who are acolytes of Big Hat Logan, who was who? This, way back in the day really in Dark Souls hat. One? He has a really big hat, believe it or not. Got it. He was in, he was like a fanboy of Seath the Scaleless. Um, what? And so why? And How? so Osiris is human is is hanging out with the guys who were fanboys of the f fanboy of. Got it. Can so I ask like one more question about the hat guy? Did yeah. his name come first or did the hat come first? Hat came first. Okay. Sort of a chicken or the egg question. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he starts <laughs> thinking that becoming a dragon via uh, experimenting with crystals uh, is cool. Oh so oh, Osiris oh, starts doing that. Um, and so eventually uh, he becomes kind of like a... Do you want to describe what Osiris looks kingdom. like? He, he kind of looks like a dragon. Like He has like a face that looks like a dragon. But he's still kind of humanoid, and he's got just like who's a weird, the, spindly, gangly, deformed body. And who's the and like who's a weird tail? Uh, poison fire type Pokemon, uh, Gen Seven Alola. Salazzle. Salazzle. He looks like a Salazzle. Got imagine it. that. That's what he looks okay. like. Okay. Yeah, that makes Are sense. You, will you edit Less a picture? Of it yes, now? I will add a, edit a picture I, of Salazzle. I don't know what Salazzle is. You'll know. That's Eventually, eventually, both right. his wife disappears. Um, and his baby is invisible. So how? Wait, Ocelot what? Is invisible, right? Ocelot, Ocelot is invisible. Yeah. So okay. Ocelot's kind of pretty. So uh, oh, Osiris returns up. to his guard. Or, yeah, that's kind of what he looks like. Kind of. He looks less uh, for reasons. Yeah. However, he has an item on him that you can get in the game called. Uh, it's a ring that prevents being backstabbed. Um, like and it just prevents getting stabbed in, in the, the back. back in the game. And he has it to avoid assassinations. And this ring, compared with being gacked out on crystals, prevents him from being able to be murdered. Except for by the player character. Except for by the player character. Lothric decides not to lick the fire, because that shit is pointless. Yeah. And he's faced with a civil war between the angels and knights loyal to Lothric. And who are the angels? Got it. They're just there. This is the thing that looks like Salazzle. Yeah, he's kind of like this that. Is, this is nothing close to Salazzle. <laughs> right, now, now put a picture of Osiris versus Salazzle yeah, on the screen. Yeah. And then okay. like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> comment Who would win? win? Who would he's win? Salazzle. Salazzle would fuck up. Osiris is a really easy boss. Um, which, do you think Osiris looks like Salazzle? So, no. Lothric is, supposed to, Lothric is supposed to link the flame. However, he doesn't link the flame. 
And so this is the part where we get to, is the flame conscious? Because the flame is like, well shit, uh, we'll just revive people who previously linked the flame so they can go d burn alive again. <laughs> Um, so, okay. So he revives Aldrich. Well, hang on. Hold the phone. Yeah. So why has not been doing this from well, the beginning? Wait a minute. Wait yeah. a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I thought they were reincarnated by now. Can they be brought back if they were reincarnated? Dark souls. <laughs> um. So it's in the game. Yeah. Aldrich. Uh, is brought back, but he doesn't. He's a big sludge pit, and he doesn't really think like. Right. Yeah. He doesn't really want to Why do did that. They bring and him back. He's sludge. The abyss watchers are brought back, but they have been corrupted by the abyss, so they're mad now. So Got they're it. not going to do mm -hmm. it. Yorm has been brought back, but he's literally so fucking depressed, he just doesn't want to do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he goes, and you find him literally just sitting on his throne, like all fucking sad. What? Yeah, and sure. also, uh, well, because his town's here's the here's the, right. the cool thing. Ludwig, the pygmy lord, is brought back, and he's like, "Yeah, let's fucking do this again. Play <laughs> on, bitch." And he's he the only one back in the fire. Well, he's the only one who's not abandoned his duty. Well, yeah. Mm. Well, for some reason, they need all of the ones they resurrected, right? Like, mm. one, just uh, all of this isn't enough. Okay, here's the issue. Ludwig has think, become yeah. stricken with a disease, um, and he's kind of like busy and he's hanging he's like dying of disease and during this Pontus Sullivan is continuing to manipulate events he's like yo Aldrich you actually been eating people what if you like ate a god no that'd be <laughs> fucked up no no what if you ate a god <laughs> that sounds delectable and so, so he, is Sullivan evil yes very much so oh, okay so, and, so, and so he the usurps the Sullivan usurps the rulership of uh Irithil considering the the two princes are uh, too busy, like, fucking each other. The king is uh, a salazzle in a room now. Yeah, uh -huh. and Not uh, really. Not really. Not really. He's, He's a dragon person. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, who yeah. a Wendigo? You could have said Wendigo. Yeah. And, and, and a, a and wizard a Wendigo. Is disease. He goes and he starts, um, Aldrich starts, comes in and starts snacking on Gwendolyn. Like when you find him in the game, he's, he's still like eating him. Yeah, he's slowly absorbing. He's a pile of goop. He doesn't oh, have yeah. jaws. <laughs> you. What you see is when it's you like find mom. him, Gwendolyn's upper half of his body is still there and still alive, being digested. Mm. Um, but you got the snake legs. The snake legs are gone. Snake legs are gone. No. Um, no, it's just the upper half of the yeah. femboy. A guy named Idex Gundir shows up to Firelink's shrine, but he's too late to link the flame, so he instead becomes a judge slash test of strength for the next guy. Well, what do so, you mean too late? Yeah, how is it Does too the fire late? stop burning? Dark souls. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's implied that like they were never gonna actually let him link the flame, yeah. and they just didn't give him like a firekeeper to help. Yeah, him. Yeah, he's uh -oh. yeah. The item of says he's like too late. That's he's like got a cop over. out. That's stupid. But basically, you were revived as an unkindled. This is the third stringer. So you know how they're like, well, we need someone to link the flame. Nobody's mm -hmm. there. Yeah. We'll bring back the people who previously linked the flame. Now they're like, we'll bring back the people uh, who tried to link the flame but failed because they weren't powerful enough. Mm. They're like so, a redemption arc. Type. Yeah, so you're brought back. You were the backup plan to the backup plan. You kill the Abyss Watchers. You Ooh. kill uh, Aldrich. You kill the brain guy. No, no, the, the goop guy. Goop guy. Um, that would be hard. He's a bunch you kill. Of eventually, you go up and you kill the twin princes. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> uh, and also, here's the part where you go to fight Yorn, right? Yeah, the giant. And so, if you do the quest line correctly, when you show up to fight Yorn, suddenly, so the important thing is, whenever you go to fight boss, you walk through a d uh, door of fog. Yeah. And no, nothing can like. When you walk through a fog door, it's just you and the boss, and none of the en enemies outside of the boss area can enter. Yeah. However, someone starts walking through the fog door. What? Mm. It's Sigurd, Yorm's <laughs> friend, who made a vow to Yorm thousands of years ago that if Yorm failed to uphold his vows, he would, he would slay the him. Guy? Yeah, and so he's a little, he's like four feet tall, <laughs> he's a guy who looks like an onion, he has a exactly. giant-ass sword, yeah. and he says, you're my friend, I've come to complete my promise. Oh my god, wow. And he helps you kill the boss in the game. That's, That's awesome. Sick. That's pretty awesome. Can we pour one out for, uh, for Sigurd, the Squid boy? Squid word. Um, and so yeah, you can go and barbecue that shit up. And if you choose to link the flame, it's kind of implied that it's too late at this point, and like not that much really happens. Yeah. However, oh, there is a quest line in which you can try to usurp fire because there is a lady named Yuri of Londor. Yeah. What does usurping fire mean? So, uh, 
Dark Souls. <laughs> Got um, it. So, Yuri of Londor is a member of the Sable Church, mm -hmm. uh, founded by Darkstalker Koth, who is unambiguously good and not evil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she's like, As dude, you told us, dude instead of like linking the fire, you should like usurp the fire. And you're like, what does that mean? And she's like, it's cool. <laughs> Yeah. His, and his ideas famously worked when he tried they to They famously yeah. work every time. <laughs> they have worked, they've done yeah. something every time. And so that is another option to an ending, to usurp the fire. Is that just put it out? No, no, it's usurp the fire. They just it. own it now. I guess so. God, great. Okay, but this is where the two DLC of uh, Dark Souls 3 come in, and this kind of presents maybe a more hopeful end. Because this whole thing's been about trying to escape this cycle. Yeah. Oh, so just re re you go fire. you go to the painted world of Arian Dell, which is uh, the painted world that Solon's from. Oh, yeah. So just the and yes, does the painted world have the bonfire mechanic? So it does. It has like its own alternate version where the painting is slowly rotting instead oh, of like ah, the hollow. Okay. And basically, um, it went. To, it's going to shit. And everyone in the painted world wants you to just burn, light the whole thing on fire just to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, throw it in the flame. Mm -hmm. And you basically, you meet this painter, who's probably another one of these dragon hybrids, and see, she says she wants to paint a new world for humanity. And that's like the more like, this is, we'll get to the hopeful ending of Got the it. game series. Um, and maybe the cycle will just keep happening, but who knows? It, yeah. It may or may not. But... She wants you to go get the Dark Soul of Man to use as paint to paint the new world. What? Interesting. So where do you Epic gotta go to go get the Dark Souls of Man? Well, those Pikmin lords still live in a kingdom known as the Ring City. And so, uh, the most last, because all those descendants of Manus are dead and he's yeah. dead and all that shit, the most pure version of the Dark Soul of Man would be, would be the Pygmy. So... Uh, this guy named Slave Knight Gale is sent ahead of you. Slave Knight Gale? <laughs> okay, that's his name. There's some very interesting names. Whatever you have a question. Dark Souls. Fuck! Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> damn it, I got this far without any. Alright, so. You sent ahead, and here's the cool part. So you battle through the, um, uh, you battle through the, um, the city. Uh, it's cool. At some point, you see Dark Eater Madir, who is a dragon that the gods raised to be like their like pet dog to fight the darkness for. Yeah, and they made him eat it. They made him eat the darkness. That's fun. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, so yeah. unsurprisingly, he has become corrupted, and so you must kill him. Uh, R.I.P. Uh, Dark Eater Madir. Yeah. Um, basically, you find you go to the pygmy lords. So here's the issue. Remember when they started feeding on the humanity of other humans? Yeah. Humanity is much like a rich chocolate, where if you eat too much of it, you get an upset stomach, yeah. right? <laughs> and so what happens is, if you feed too much on the humanity of other people, uh, you become a disgusting chaos monster. As you do, yeah. And so Slave Knight Gale has gone, and he has slain these pygmy lords. And the issue is, he isn't able to absorb their blood. They're so old and withered. Mm -hmm. Their blood is literally dry. Oh, um, now we're running low on battery too. Oh shit! Yeah. Uh, how uh, how much battery? It's flashing red. Oh, we're almost done. <laughs> okay. Um, and so it becomes the point where it's like, you need the only way Gale could possibly um, get their souls is to kill them. So he kills yeah. them. He absorbs the humanity, but he absorbs so much humanity that he becomes a monster. You mm -hmm. kill him, you take the humanity, and you take it back to the painter, and she is says she's going to paint a new world for humanity. Got it. And that is the, the end, end of, of Dark videos. Souls. Got it. That's like any, the best any, ending. I Does guess the so. the Age of Dark ever happen? It seems to me... Dark Souls! Got it. It might be inevitable, it might never happen, because the first sin, we don't know. Fantastic. Does anyone have any final questions about Dark Souls? Well, what was the What's the moral of this say? story? What's the word we can't say? Uh, I don't know. It seems Dark we were Souls! It seems to me that this is a story about a bunch of changeless times happening, yeah. and then change happened, mm -hmm. but the folly of the story is when the people who created the change tried to maintain it by doing a cycle of burning themselves, and basically Gwen became the dragons because he was promoting a series of no change, and that led to his unbecoming and everyone getting fucked over. Literary themes! Literary, Literary themes! Literary themes! We love to see it. Yay. The Thank you. spirit of change embraced. Alright, we're done then. Alright. Mm -hmm. Yay.